Now in this video, we're going to be setting up a very just quick way to aim. So I don't know why I closed down the engine. I need to have it actually open for this. What we're going to do is in our character base, we're going to set a simple Boolean and a getter function. And that's where we're also going to end up setting it to be replicated in the future in our Nazi zombie character class to, um, well, it's like our control variable for aiming. Duh. So what we're going to do is under our weapon info, I'm going to do boolean b is aiming. I'm going to make a comment above it, set to replicate, skip owner. And I will go over why we're doing that whenever we actually set up the uh, replication. So now in our character base, we're just going to set that to false by default. B is aiming equals false. Then we want to make a getter function. So we'll make a new public section to make it blueprint callable. So you function blueprint callable. Return a boolean. Let's call it is aiming or get is aiming. Create the definition and the only thing it's going to return is b is aiming. And we also need to set up the actual uh, input bindings. So we're going to return b is aiming, like so. Now back in our input component, we're going to have this jump function for pressed and release. We're going to be doing the same thing for aiming. So I'm going to copy and paste it down and change it to aim instead of jump. Now we need to create the actual um, input inside of Unreal Engine. So we're going to go to Settings, Project Settings, Input, Action Mapping, create a new one called Aim. And it's going to be our right mouse button. Right? And let's save it. I, I'm going to go ahead and close mine because i got to restart it. And we need to create a pretty much on press and on released kind of function. So under on fire, I want to do void. Uh, let's see. On aiming start and void on aiming end. Just like so. I'm going to create the definition for that and set b is aiming equals true. And b is aiming to false on this one. And I want to make these uh, virtual so that I can override them inside of our Nazi zombie character class. The reason I'm doing this in the base is because it's something I, well, it's something that any character is going to really have the ability to do. So V is Amy equals false. So virtual make both functions virtual. I can spell like so. And let's set our input to actually call those functions. So it's under a character base. And when it was on aim start, I think, on aiming start and on aiming end. So whenever we press our right mouse button, on aiming start should run. And when we release it, it should end. And then we have this getter function. I'm going to move it up below our two aiming functions. That is going to simply return it. This should allow us for just a basic, just an aiming function, or to implement aiming functionality into our blueprint. I mean, our animation. Alrighty. 
Now let's see how it does. We should be able to just easily plug this right up. Go back to the animation blueprint. The event graph. And I actually changed my mind. I want to change this from character base to um, our Nazi zombie character. So cast to BP Nazi zombie character, like so. That change our character type to BP underscore Nazi zombie character. Rechange that reference and simply set it just back like so. Then we're going to drag off and we're going to do get is aiming. Then we're going to use that variable to set is aiming. So compile and save. And this should allow us to toggle between idle to run and aimed idle to run. So let's see. There we go. So we have our aiming with just a very slight kind of breathing to it and our normal. Uh, oh, not aiming on the sights. So now that that is out of the way, that was neat. I will see you in the next one where we start working on our actual fire function and overriding it so that the project or the line trace comes out of the muzzle of the weapon. So there is a bone. Actually, let me load up the Blender project and I will show you what I mean. So if we look at the skeleton, There's a bone called muzzle that is literally right at the tip of the muzzle. This bone here. And this bone is what I've used to kind of help with the aiming. So I've attached a long cylinder mesh to it that is used to, that's pretty much going to be our line trace. So if I show you in the animation tab, you can see that long uh, mesh there is going roughly to the center of the crosshair. I had to do a little bit of uh, changing to the front sight to get it to line up about as close as I could. But you can see how this is kind of starting to work. So as the animation, it actually select the I'm on the fire, duh. ADS idle. Right. Did I break you? Yes, I did. Cool. Anyways, I no longer have the uh, animation for the aim down sights idle, apparently. But you can see. As it moves, that line follows. So if I was to send off another shot right here, it would be way high and that kind of stuff. So that's essentially how this is going to work. It's going to go based off of the transforms of the muzzle bone. And it should be about as close as you can actually get because it's I got it pretty closely lined up with the sights. So as long as your sights are on, it should hit without actually having to do any sort of adjustments to the center. And when you're firing from the hip, I also have it fairly close. I think it's at like 25 yards or, or no, I, my blender's in meters. So like 25 meters or so, I think I have it set at the uh, point where it would intersect to your crosshair. So 
Now uh, that should be kind of interesting to see how that all works. I've never actually really tried to make any sort of precise aiming based off of the weapon before, so this is going to be our first time doing that. But I uh, will see you in the next one when we actually try it.